One sentence. The Israeli Prime Minister came here today and said that Israel is surrounded by those who want to destroy it, an enemy. We're here, members of uh, a Muslim Arab committee, mandated by 57 Arab and Muslim countries. And I can tell you here, very unequivocally, all of us are willing to, right now, uh, guarantee the security of Israel in the context of Israel ending the occupation and uh, 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 allowing for the emergence of a Palestinian state, independent state, along the reference that we all agree. The, he is creating that danger because he simply does not want the two-state solution. And if he does not want the two-state solution, can you ask the Israeli officials, what is their end game? other than just wars and wars and wars. I'm telling you, all of us in the Arab world here, we want a peace in which Israel lives in peace and security accepted, normalized with, with all Arab countries in the context, context of ending the occupation, withdrawing from Arab territory, allowing for the emergence of an uh, independent sovereign Palestinian state on June 4, 1967, lines with occupied Jerusalem's capital. That is our narrative. That is, and we will guarantee Israel security in that context. Can you ask Israelis what's their narrative other than I'm going to continue to go to war, I'm going to kill this and kill that and destroy this and this that. The, the amount of damage that Israeli government has done, 30 years of efforts to convince people that peace is possible, this Israeli government killed it. The amount of dehumanization, hatred, bitterness will take generations to navigate, to, to navigate through. So ultimately the question is, we want peace. And we've laid out a plan for peace. Ask any Israeli official, what is their plan for peace? You'll get nothing because they're only thinking of the first step. We're going to go destroy Gaza, inflame the West Bank, destroy Lebanon. And after that, they have no plan. We have a plan. We have no partner for peace in Israel. There is a partner for peace in the Arab world. And that's why the international community needs to move. Well, as we always said, uh, without solving the Palestinian problem, and end the suffering of our people that started with the Nakba in 1948, the region of the Middle East will continue to be struggling, unstable, and secure. I think we are proven right that it's time for the state of Palestine to be established and on the ground and as fast as possible to end the misery, the insecurity, and the troubles of the Middle East. We are believers of, in peace and prosperity for all. We thank all countries that recognize Palestine. We also invite others to do the same. We thank the contract group Arab and Islamic countries done a terrific job to support the statehood project. We believe that the UN Security Council resolution, sorry, the United Nations General Assembly resolution 10 days ago is a very good start to end the occupation, start serious effort to establish the Palestinian state and ensure that the whole region will live in peace and prosperity once and for all. Thank you. The Israeli Prime Minister called for better relations between the Kingdom and Israel, like as in the uh, Abraham Accords. Given what's going on, is that still possible? Thank you. Uh, it was interesting to see that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, in his uh, words, in quite a lengthy statement about the issue, not once mentioned Palestine, not once mentioned the Palestinians. And this is exactly the problem, uh, because without addressing the issue of Palestine, it will not be, able, it will not be possible to reach the two potential uh, uh, of regional peace and stability. So the crux of the matter is, how do we address the issue of Palestine? We address it through what has been established in international law, the formation of a Palestinian state, and that will indeed open up uh, the horizon, not just for normalization, but also for integration, for cooperation. It ha offers huge potential for all of us in the region. But again, without addressing the issue of the Palestinians, this is not going to happen. Following up, I mean, on that question, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu frequently referenced Saudi Arabia uh, in his speech. And yet, just minutes earlier, he had authorized this strike on Beirut. Do you feel tricked uh, by the Israelis in terms of uh, him referencing Saudi Arabia while also almost simultaneously uh, attacking Beirut? I mean, he can reference whoever he wants. Our position is clear, and as I just stated, uh, what we believe very, very, very strongly in, first of all, that a ceasefire is necessary 
that the guns are not going to solve anything, that we need to move towards a peace in our region, and that peace is firmly rooted in addressing the Palestinian issue. Minister, there is deep concern here and elsewhere about the way things are heading in the Middle East. How dangerous a moment would you say this is for the region? I mean, we have been saying, uh, you know, for months now, that this is an incredibly dangerous moment and that the risk of uh, the situation spiraling out of control is real uh, and that is uh, not less the case now, it is indeed more the case and that is why uh, we continue to push for a ceasefire, a ceasefire certainly in Gaza but also now a ceasefire in Lebanon because again guns are not the answer. How much more dangerous do you think it is now? Is, I mean, it's hard to assess a specific level of danger. I think uh, Minister Ayman would like to add something. Thank you. I think it can get much, much more dangerous, particularly if the Israeli government is allowed to continue with its uh, escalatory measures against Palestinians in the West Bank and against the holy sites. Uh, you have a deadlock in Gaza because the Israeli Prime Minister aborted the exchange deal. You have an escalation in Lebanon because he sees uh, he only understands that uh, uh, the language of war. Uh, he hasn't listened to the international community. He didn't listen to his allies. So he launched war in Lebanon. And now uh, uh, this government is trying to escalate on the West Bank. If that happens, that is when uh, the threat of regional war will become the more real because the symbolism and the importance uh, of the holy sites uh, will, is across the Arab and Muslim world and will reverberate across. Basically, what we're saying here is that Netanyahu is doing all of that because he can. Almost a year ago, we stood before you here and we warned of this moment. Now we're at it. It's going to get worse unless the Security Council right behind us performs its duty and does what it has to do, protect regional international peace, unless it prevents this most radical of Israeli government, a member of which was a member of an organization that the U.S. itself had labeled as a terrorist organization, unless they stop them, unless this government faces consequences, then the whole region is falling into the abyss, and the future of the whole region, including the future of Israel, will be compromised and will be talking about a future of war. It is time to face the truth, and the truth is, unless Netanyahu is stopped, unless this government is stopped, war will encompass all of us. Yesterday, the U.S. president, the French president, spoke of a possibility of a humanitarian truce. As one of you just said, Israel had agreed. According to the Lebanese government, Hezbollah had agreed. And Netanyahu lands here, and the first thing he does, saying that he will go ahead with his aggression in Lebanon. And he makes a speech which is full of disinformation, diverting away uh, attention from the real issue, the only and the real danger. The real danger in the region is the policies of this government of Israel, are the actions of this government of Israel, and the failure of the international community to stop it and say enough, protect international law, protect uh, our international uh, system, and protect the lives of Palestinians who have been reduced to, to nothing. I mean, yesterday, the day before in Lebanon, over 500 people were killed in one day, as if nothing has happened. Can I ask a question here about my microphone? Now we're in a zone of, of real danger. Anything can go wrong. Netanyahu obviously wants regional war, and that's what been warning against. So when you go into Lebanon, and look, what's going to happen in Lebanon now? If, there, if this war continue, the, the people are, are leaving their homes. If, if there is a land invasion into Lebanon, the Lebanese army, army will have to defend this country. And then what, where, what are we going to be looking at? So we are looking at the eye of real danger right now. This has to stop. And if now the international community does not see the gravity of the danger, then we'll be here probably in two months and telling you, you know, things have really gotten worse. Thank you. The Security Council has failed. It's been a year and the Security Council has failed. Isn't it past time to have General Assembly uniting for peace resolutions with teeth, with sanctions, with other punitive measures against, against Israel? Or this is all posturing? You this, are is, this is not addressing the needs of the people of the world. It's for domestic posturing. Well, I uh, would like to join uh, my uh, colleagues uh, on the, uh, the, how dangerous is the situation right now. I mean, uh, to drag the whole region into a full-fledged uh, regional war 
this does not serve the interest of anybody. We would like uh, also to reaffirm that the issue of uh, Gaza is the main, the core of the problem in our region. And in Palestine, of course, without solving this problem, you know, there is no peace, there is no stability in this uh, region. Uh, as for uh, what you have mentioned, yes, it's, uh, we, we have all options available to go to uh, the General Assembly. If the Security Council is not assuming its responsibility, of course, uh, we can uh, explore the possibility of going to uh, General Assembly. It's not acceptable to have uh, impunity for one country or to consider itself above the law. So uh, it's res the responsibility of the international community to intervene as soon as possible before having a full-fledged war which will not serve the interests of anybody in the region. Excuse me, excuse me. Stefano, Stefano Vaca, leave the